My Christmas and New Year were pretty good, and it's just left me filled with so much positivity and happiness. But today, we are going to be looking at somebody who is not feeling so positive and happy today. So a few nights ago, I was scrolling through YouTube, and somebody by the name of Terragon managed to catch my eye with a video responding to Under the Mayo's Act 2 review of Ultra Kill. You know, the one that happened like a year and a half ago. And honestly, I thought it was pretty... eh. And honestly, I thought it was pretty... eh. Eh. This might be hard to believe, but are you aware that nobody gives a shit? But then I decided to look at his channel, and I quickly saw that he made a video responding to Psychonautic Therapy's video on the Act Man Arena shooter drama. You know, that drama that died off like nine months ago. And it was pretty fucking terrible. And it was pretty fucking terrible. And it was pretty fucking terrible. This bastard has been maligned and humiliated. This poor bastard has, has been maligned and humiliated. Yes. Well, Mr. Funny Man, is this how you get your sick kicks? What? It's just an ordinary crabby. Oh my goodness! Squidward! The enemies also take so long to defeat. He's fucking Batman. He should be able to finish off enemies with two or three hits. Two or three hits. Two or three hits. Be a bit controversial. As an element of Under the Mayo's argument about Ultra Kill. As an element of Under the Mayo's argument about Ultra Kill. Of Under the Mayo's argument about Ultra Kill. Can I help you? <laughs> Liar! Hey, what's going on, YouTube? This is Terragon. And today, I'm going to be responding to someone who has responded to my Elden Ring harsh critique. And he's kind of pissing me off. Now look, I understand where you're coming from. I really do. But there's things that you're saying that are just not accurate. So I'm here to lay it down. This is Terragon. What's going on? Let's begin. But, you know, that's not the video we're going to be responding to because I think I found one that's even funnier. The title of the video we are going to be watching is Elden Ring, A Harsh Critique. Now, he says it's a critique, but really it just amounts to him ranting and raving about how Elden Ring is overrated because it's the same as Dark Souls. So, without further ado, let's see why this man has such a massive problem with Elden Ring. This game is so overrated! The fact that you have fanboys go crazy over this game! First Software fans are the biggest fanboys I've ever seen! If they don't calm the hell down for one second, I mean damn, what the hell is so revolutionary about this game? <laughs> the fucking irony of telling people to calm down when he himself is ranting and raving like fucking hippo zoned. Like, dude, it's a video game. Calm the hell down. Okay, to be fair, I do want to acknowledge the slim possibility that this dude might be trolling. Because in the other two videos of his I watched, he's a lot more calm and collective, so this video might be an outlier where he's just doing a bit. But why do I say it's a slim possibility? Well, because he's done two other videos on Elden Ring, and while I haven't watched them, looking at the thumbnail, it definitely seems to be negative. But let's keep going. You go around a huge environment that only serves one purpose, Dark Souls, again. Only now it's more open, and suddenly it's different. Are you fucking serious? Well, seeing as Elden Ring is the first time we've ever had a Souls game take place in an open world like this, yeah, I'd say that is different. Every Souls game prior to Elden Ring had a Metroidvania-style world design, with the exception of Demon Souls, which had the five-level structure. Plus, those previous Souls games were a lot more railroaded, whereas the open-world design of Elden Ring gives you a lot of freedom as to how you tackle the game's objectives. Let's assess the aspects, people, because I'm having a hard time seeing why people put this this game up like it's the coming of Jesus. I'm Blind Beard the Pirate. <laughs> You're gonna sit there and get on my video editing skills because he was like, the video's eh. Later on in the video, you're gonna hear him get on my editing and stuff like that, but then look at his editing. Your editing ain't exactly perfect, so I wouldn't talk. Again, your video editing ain't exactly perfect, so I wouldn't talk. All right, you wanna go, Thunderstruck? Let's go. So, 
Elden Ring doesn't do much with its open world design. A lot of the open world design inside of Elden Ring consists of a lot of things that have to do with an action RPG design, not necessarily an open world design. You see, it has an open environment that it only serves one purpose, and the main purpose is action and fighting. The main purpose is not open world like exploration or activities like Skyrim. In Skyrim, there are NPCs with dialogue choices, actual options. There's different aspects to its open world design, and a lot of it has to do with exploration, and it rewards you for exploring. In Elden Ring, it does let you explore, to fight, it does let you roam, to fight, it does let you see new things, to fight. That is literally mainly what they utilize their supposed open world design for. And I say supposed because, really, that's not necessarily an open world design that's designed for exploration. Probably because Elden Ring is by far the most refined that a Souls game has ever been. Like, play Demon Souls or Dark Souls 1 or 2, and then go play Elden Ring, and it's a night and day difference. First off, the combat system is the exact same combat design seen in From Software Games. My god! This is repetitive, because if you play Sekiro, Bloodborne, Dark Souls 1, motherfucker, you've played Elden Ring! Ah! Christ, my fucking ears. Yeah, for the sake of not giving tinnitus to everybody who watches this video, I'm gonna lower the volume of this dude's video so it doesn't blow out y'all's eardrums. But back to what he was saying, yeah, the core of the combat design is the same as Dark Souls or Bloodborne, but at the same time, that's kind of how sequels tend to work. But that doesn't mean Elden Ring's combat design didn't innovate on top of that. For example, you can now jump, which allows you to do jumping attacks. There's the new guard counter. There's the Ashes of War system. There's there's also the Spirit Ashes, which you can use to summon a variety of different NPCs to help you, which, by the way, is different from the regular summoning mechanic that's been around since Demon Souls. There's the Stance Breaking mechanic. And, of course, there's a bunch of new enemies and bosses to fight. I could keep going on, but I think y'all get the point. It's designed for fighting. A slim possibility, no, I'm being real. Yeah, that's about right. I'm not trolling in the video, I'm being dead ass serious. This game is overrated as hell, and people have put it up when Firm Software has been duplicating the exact same fundamental mechanics that they utilized in the very first Dark Souls, and they have been utilizing this in other games, and they haven't changed or evolved it, and yet people praise it up and put it up like it's the coming of Jesus, and it makes no sense to me. Okay, first off, what the hell is with that music? It sounds like two robots malfunctioning. The very first time a Souls-like game has ever taken place in an open world. I see. Too bad they didn't utilize the open world design like Ubisoft games have. That's right. I'm here to admit it to you. Go ahead and flame me and call it a hot take, but Ubisoft utilizes their open world design. Bethesda utilizes their open world design. Farm Software only utilizes it for one singular purpose, and that's action, so you might as well have just made it a linear action RPG. You just said that my video was terrible, but look at your editing. Your editing ain't exactly perfect, so I wouldn't talk. Yeah, that's why you shouldn't talk shit, because look at your editing skills. They aren't exactly perfect. So again, I, w I really wouldn't be talking if I were you. Ah, the most refined as a Souls game has ever been. Yeah, in terms of its combat mechanics, all they did was take the exact same combat system and refine it, but they didn't add anything new to it. So that means you have the exact same combat as Dark Souls 3, right? The same amount of attacks and the same amount of techniques and the exact same combat system, except all they took, all they did was take it and just make it more refined. That's the same combat. You didn't add anything to it. You didn't evolve it. You didn't add new combos, moves, techniques. When you compare Kingdom Hearts 1 to Kingdom Hearts 2, complete separation. Compare Devil May Cry 2 to Devil May Cry 3, complete separation. Compare Dark Souls 1 to Elden Ring, the same shit. Almost the exact same thing, except it's more refined. Or Dark Souls 3 to Elden Ring, the exact same, even more similar. That means From Software has not been evolving their formula. Instead, they've been duplicating it because if it's successful and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I, I can't stand that. I think that's bullshit. And I think that honestly, they should really be doing more than just refining the combat. They should be adding more to the combat mechanics. Wow. Probably because Elden Ring is by far the most refined that a Souls game has ever been. Like, play Demon Souls or Dark Souls 1 or 2, and then go play Elden Ring, and it's a night and day difference. Oh, playing Dark Souls 2, and it's a night and day difference? Oh, sure. Sure. They are so similar, it's ridiculous. And they are all similar. And that even goes for Sekiro. Now, I'll give you this. I do like Sekiro. I do like Sekiro, but Sekiro is similar to Dark Souls as well. There, I said it. 
they're all similar. That goes for Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 3, Demon Souls, Dark Souls 1. They are all similar. However, I love Dark Souls 1. I love Demon Souls. All right. So, and I like Sekiro. I like it. I don't love it. I just like it. All right. So, I, I got some firm software games that I got a soft spot for. Does that mean that Elder Ring is groundbreaking? Does that mean that Elder Ring is revolutionary? No. And also, the open world design is pointless in Elden Ring because they don't even utilize it to its actual potential. First off, the combat system is the exact same combat design seen in From Software games. My god! This is repetitive because if you play Sekiro, Bloodborne, Dark Souls 1, motherfucker, you've played Elden Ring! Ah! Christ, my fucking ears. Yeah, for the sake of not giving tinnitus to everybody who watches this video, I'm gonna lower the volume of this dude's video so it doesn't blow out y'all's eardrums. But back to what he was saying, yeah, the core of the combat design is the same as Dark Souls or Bloodborne, but at the same time, that's kind of how sequels tend to work. But that doesn't mean Elden Ring's combat design didn't innovate on top of that. For example, you can now jump, which allows you to do jumping attacks. There's the new guard counter. There's the Ashes of War system. Whoa! Stand back, everybody. In Elden Ring, you can now jump. You can also crouch and use stealth. Yeah. And you, you can't play in different ways, by the way. You can only stealth one time with that one person. Everybody else is alerted, so there's literally no stealth mechanics whatsoever. Now, you see, that's why you should have seen my review. I have a review on Elden Ring not being revolutionary. And I pointed out the Ashes of War and said that that's good, but it's flawed. Here's why. Because it doesn't give you new combat techniques. It's only a bonus attack move and you can only equip one at a time. So again, I failed to see the fact that Elden Ring did so much with its open world design. And I also failed to see the fact that it did so much with its combat mechanics. Wanna try that again? There's also the Spirit Ashes, which you can use to summon a variety of different enemies. PCs to help you, which, by the way, is different from the regular summoning mechanic that's been around since Demon Souls. There's the stance-breaking mechanic. And, of course, there's a bunch of new enemies and bosses to fight. I could keep going on, but I think y'all get the point. WHY IS THIS HAPPENING?! WHY ARE THEY REPEATING THE SAME SHIT, ASSETS, AND ANIMATIONS, AND WHY AM I YELLING?! I don't know, you tell me why you're yelling, but honestly, I'd prefer it if you didn't so that you wouldn't blow out my fucking ears. But as to why they're repeating assets and animations, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Oh please, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That is a poor excuse for ju for um, validating game design decisions that just repeat the same formula because it's successful. Mission failed. We'll go next time. Like, I would rather From Software spend its development time developing new content for the game rather than making sure that each animation is different from the last game. Well, here's the thing. People claim this game is so groundbreaking. It's so revolutionary. Are you fucking kidding me? What did it even do with its open world design? What did it do new, even with its combat system? This overused-ass combat system that has been utilized in so many games, and now, oh, look, it's being utilized in an open world where they don't even do open world shit. You don't have open world activities, freedom, NPCs with quest lines, dialogue options, RPG mechanics, environmental interactivity. Where the fuck is it? Dude, literally everything that you just mentioned is an Elden Ring. Open world activities are in the game, just because it's not like Far Cry where it immediately spells out every single thing you can do right from the get-go doesn't mean they aren't there. Freedom? It's an open world game. Now, granted, there are some progression gates, like you have to defeat two Great Room bosses in order to gain access to Landell, but even with that, the open world design of Elden Ring gives you a lot of freedom. For example, if you're really struggling on a certain certain boss or a certain section and you need a break or you want to go level up and get better shit, you can leave, go do something else in the open world, and then come back to them later. Dialogue options and NPCs with quest lines, like, do I even justify that with a response, seeing as there's plenty of examples I can point to, like Millicent or Ranny the Witch? Environmental interactivity, my guy, this is probably the best example of it in the fucking Souls game out there. And RPG mechanics, you know, you have the character creation tool, you got fucking stats, you have a wide variety of different equipment options that you can use based on whatever stats you have. Like, bro, everything you fucking listed is in the game, so where's the problem? What is the problem? Actually, no. Elden Ring does not have the same level of design as something like Skyrim, where you actually have dialogue choices and options. 
or something like Elder Scrolls in general. So, or something like an Ubisoft game, you know? In Elder Scrolls, not only do you have dialogue choices, but different people have different functions of AI. You don't really have stuff like that in Elden Ring. Each person that you meet in Elden Ring only says one quote of dialogue. There aren't really options or choices of that magnitude. Now, when it comes to the open world design, well, the open world design is only being utilized to fight bosses and enemies. It's not being utilized for open world exploration. There is a difference between an open world that utilizes exploration and an open world that utilizes action and fighting. Elden Ring is is utilizing its own open world environment for only one purpose, action and fighting, leading you to wonder why wasn't it just a linear action game if it was just going to do the same thing with its own design as it does with a linear action game. Oh, the best example, but you couldn't give any examples of environments interactivity. Now, what do I mean by environments of interactivity? I'll tell you what I mean. So in a game like Assassin's Creed Syndicate, you can literally throw a knife at a barrel and that causes it to crash and kill other people. Environmental interactivity. In Batman Begins, you can throw your batarang at an environment or area and you can destroy a bunch of objects or cause a lot of things to collide within each other. Assassin's Creed Syndicate, that is environmental interactivity. Batman Begins, that is environmental interactivity. Elden Ring. That does not have that level of environmental interactivity. It doesn't allow you to complete missions in different ways. It doesn't allow you to interact with the environment. That's not in the game. Elden Ring actually utilizes its open world environment for exploration because you asked me to give examples, I'm giving them to you. Not only does it utilize its open world for exploration, but the enemies have actual dialogue and options within dialogue choices. Not only that, but whenever you talk to NPCs or see NPCs, they have something called a routine. So the actual AI of them has actual routines. In Elden Ring, the, a lot of the enemies that you speak to, they only say the same quotes of dialogue. In Skyrim, they move around. They have different routines. They move around and do different things. In Elden Ring, it's limited to where you're mainly just fighting. It's mainly about action. It's not about just exploration. Yes, you could explore certain things, but the only thing that you're really exploring is new enemies and bosses to fight and a few NPCs that you talk to for very brief periods of time. That is not the same thing. In Skyrim, you're exploring an entire world and you can interact with that world. That's right. You can craft. You can build a home. You can start a family. You can interact with the environment. And everything you do has an actual purpose. It's not just fighting. It's much more than that. It's an open world. And it even has immersive sim elements. You do not see this level of innovation in Elden Ring because Elden Ring is an action game that put itself in an open environment without utilizing its open world aspects. It would really help your case if you actually gave examples on what you think Skyrim does that's so good that Elden Ring slacks in. But, spoiler alert, he doesn't. This game is just like From Software linear games. NPCs are stagnant as hell, and only say one quote of dialogue, just like Dark Souls! Yeah, maybe you'd find them to be far less stagnant if you actually did their quest lines. The combat, the meticulous movement, and fighting, um yeah! That's like Dark Souls! The combat system is the exact same combat design as Dark Souls 3. When Dark Souls 3 took the combat design, of the first Dark Souls, and it made it more refined. So if that's the case, motherfucker, how in the fuck is duplicating the same combat system you utilize the Dark Souls 3? How in the flipping flying fuck is that revolutionary? All right, now to be fair, I have not yet played Dark Souls 3. Wait a second, you didn't play Dark Souls 3? No wonder why you're so impressed by Elden Ring's aspects. That's because you didn't play Dark Souls 3 and realize that Dark Souls 3 and Elden Ring are fundamentally the same game. Only difference is they plopped you in an open-ended environment. That's it. But you're still doing the same thing you did in Dark Souls 3. Why do you think I don't like Elden Ring? Because I played so many From Software games. I played them. I played Bloodborne. I played Dark Souls 1. I played Dark Souls 3. I played many of them, even Sekiro. And guess what? They're all extremely similar. Really, really similar. And that's a problem. Now you see the reason why I don't like it in the first place. So that wasn't just me saying that just to say that. I was being dead ass fucking serious. That is why I said that. That's why I have a problem with Elden Ring. And that's one of the main issues with that game on a fundamental level. The fact that it didn't utilize its open world design. The fact that it duplicated the same combat mechanics. The fact that it didn't even evolve its own genre after several of their games have already been released. Oh, you don't have to repeat yourself, because I discussed the exact same thing in my review. You know, the Ashes of War, 
also spells. I talked about that too. All right, and I've already explained things about that. Now, I understand that the Ashes of War is there, but it's only one bonus attack move. That's like runes in God of War. It's only a bonus attack move, and you can only equip one at a time. And it has nothing to do with the main combat system itself. I already know about stance breaking. I know about guard counters. I know about that. But guess what? Those are only small, little, minuscule things. That's kind of like the parry from Dark Souls 1. That's it. That's Those are only small, minute differences. If you compare that to the changes made in Dark Souls 1 and 3, that's the same thing. They just add a few things here or there, like Bloodborne and dodging. That's the same thing. All they did was add a couple of little aspects here or there and said, hey, this is a brand new game. Oh, it's like it's a brand new formula, except it's not. This is only adding a few aspects of the fundamentals without adding a bunch of different new things in the actual fundamentals of the combat mechanics. The combat mechanics need more stuff. The combat system needs more attack moves. It needs combos. It needs different kinds of attack moves and multiple different combos and combinations. It can't just be the same combat system that they utilize in Dark Souls 1 and 3. However, even though Elden Ring has the same core combat design as previous Souls games, there are quite a few differences. I already discussed the Spirit Ashes and the Ashes of War systems already, so I'm not going to repeat myself here. Their stance breaking, where if you hit an enemy with enough heavy attacks, they'll break their stance and you can repost them, which, granted, Dark Souls 3 did have something similar called poise, but it's not exactly the same. You can jump in the middle of combat, which allows for different kinds of jumping attacks. Power wielding, a mechanic that was previously only in Dark Souls 2 makes its return here in Elden Ring. Additionally, there's the Crimson versus Cerulean Flasks, where you have to ration between being able to restore your health and restore your magic. During the open world sections of the game, you can ride on horseback on Torrent, which allows you to do horseback combat, something that didn't exist in any previous Souls game. And then there's also the different weapons, spells, enemies, and bosses that they added. So given all that, I'd say that's pretty fucking innovative. What the fuck are you people talking about? Dude, this game isn't revolutionary. From an open world aspect, compare this to Oblivion. It's not revolutionary. From a gaming aspect, from a combat system aspect, and from an open world aspect, again, compare this game to Oblivion. Look at this waste, large ass mother flipping environment. Holy cow, people. Holy cow, it's goddamn huge and beautiful. What the fuck is this? Dude, this huge ass environment is just being utilized for Dark Souls shit. Well, no fucking shit. What? You mean to tell me that the open world in a Souls game is being used for Souls stuff? Oh my god, I never would have guessed that. What's next? You're gonna tell me that GTA's open world is being used for GTA shit? Or that fucking Red Dead's open world is being used for Red Dead shit? Or Just Cause's open world is being used for Just Cause shit? Yeah, I, I saw the no fucking shit thing. I get it. But dude, look, man, I'm just gonna be real. Okay, yes, it's only being utilized for Dark Souls stuff, but if you play a game like Far Cry, it's being utilized for open world stuff. That's awesome. If you play a game like Skyrim, it's being utilized for open world things or immersive sim elements. You come to Elden Ring, I'm just doing the same goddamn thing with the formula of Dark Souls, and you have an open world Dark Souls game. This could literally utilize all kinds of different elements of the genre, and the only thing it utilized it for was just combat, and that's it. And they didn't even evolve the combat either, they just duplicated the exact same combat. So that's not really innovative. No, you're bringing up GTA and Red Dead. Red Dead actually utilizes open world environment for different activities and functions. You can even interact with the environment and interact with multiple different people. That is a true open world game because it actually utilizes its open world design. It isn't just shooting and that's it. There's so many different quest lines that you do tons of different things in its open world environment used for just cause shit like i seriously do not get what the problem is here i mean maybe if you're just not the kind of person that likes the souls gameplay but in that case why the fuck did you buy a souls game then actually it was a gift my brother gifted me elden ring through game share so i did not pay for that game however i had a lot to say about it regardless and i also really appreciate the fact that he did that it's dark souls again what the fuck what the fuck is why the fuck is this game so similar to the first Dark Souls? Fuck! That game, yeah, it was revolutionary. It still is. You know, you know what? It's a masterpiece. But what the fuck is this? This is a huge. This is huge. It doesn't utilize its open world design. 
It doesn't utilize its open world environment. This shit is just Dark Souls again. You copying your own formula, but then utilizing it for an open world where you just do the same thing you do in Dark Souls. Again, what exactly is the problem with that? Elden Ring's open world gives you a lot of freedom as to how you tackle its objectives. Plus, the exploration aspect that was in some of the previous Souls games is at its best here because of the open world design. Actually, Elden Ring does not give you freedom to how you tackle objectives. You can't go stealth, you can't go demolition, you can't go all out. You can only tackle objectives the exact same way. You just fight. And you don't fight in different ways. The, the only main way you fight is mainly just with the base combat mechanics. That's really it. Now, you don't really tackle it in different ways in the same way that you would in a game like Killzone Mercenary, where you can conquer things in different ways, different kinds of ways, or Halo. You can tackle things in different ways, or Kingdom Hearts, where you have to use different aspects of the combat mechanics in order to tackle different bosses and functions. It's mainly the same. You hit, you dodge, you hit, hit, dodge, dodge, wait for your moment to attack, learn the patterns, hit, dodge, dodge, dodge again, roll, 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 hit, hit, then bam. This has been true for so many From Software games, and it's definitely true for Elden Ring. And seeing as you just labeled Dark Souls 1 as a masterpiece, I really don't see what the problem is with having a Dark Souls style game in an open world. So again, where is the problem? What is the problem? So how is this groundbreaking? I've already explained why multiple times earlier. I am not gonna repeat myself again. Oh, why? Because, oh, it went against the Ubisoft formula? Yeah, but guess what? Games like Ghost of Tsushima have the Ubisoft formula. Does that make it bad? Does that make it any less of an open world? No! You know, I am really glad I went ahead and turned down the volume so that my eardrums didn't get blown out a second fucking time, but back on topic. When it comes to the Ubisoft formula of open worlds, it's not that it's an inherently bad formula, it's just the way that most companies, including Ubisoft, use that formula is pretty fucking flawed. That doesn't mean that some games can't use it effectively, like for example, I'd say that Just Cause 3 is an example of a game that has the Ubisoft formula but does it well. And as for Ghost of Tsushima, I have not played it, so I can't really say how good or bad the open world design is there. But given how well it was received, it probably has a good open world design. Or it could be a case where the game is good despite the open world design, kind of like how Halo Infinite is. But given that the Souls games are focused on combat and exploration, the Ubisoft formula isn't really conducive to that. Instead of immediately dotting every single activity on the open world map from the get-go, the game actually wants you to explore its open world to find shit. And even then, it's not like it's too difficult to find, like you see a building off in the distance, go ride towards that fucker. There's probably someone to talk to or somebody to fight. But you can't mix it up and do it in different ways like you can in Skyrim. And if you try to tackle things with spells in Elden Ring, you gotta really know what you're doing and skill into it. And yeah. Okay, the Ubisoft formula is flawed, but why is it flawed? A lot of people keep complaining about the Ubisoft formula and complain about it being into multiple games, but they don't really go into details as to why. They just say that it's objectively bad and expect people to just buy it. You even admitted that Just Cause 3 has the Ubisoft formula and does it well. So if there are games that actually do this formula well, then why is it so bad that, honestly, one of the things that I don't like about Elden Ring is that unlike Ubisoft's formula, it doesn't have a lot of the different aspects of its open world environment that you see in Ubisoft games. And I prefer that over Elden Ring's design. So why is that wrong? Why is it wrong for me to prefer that design philosophy over what I see in Elden Ring? Elden Ring is like if you took all of those things out but didn't replace it with anything. Ubisoft is like, here's all this stuff. Go ahead. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, you know, excited because I actually get to do a bunch of stuff because in an open world, I want to do a lot of different things. Ghost of Tsushima's open world design might not be perfect, but it's pretty damn good. It does follow the Ubisoft formula, so you'll be going to a lot of towers and bases taking over bases, which might get a little repetitive, but it does have a huge open world environment with tons of different things to do and an incredible story. And it just it's just really large and vast and really beautiful. So overall, Ghost of Tsushima does a great job capitalizing on its open world. It doesn't feel like it should have just been some linear action game like Elden Ring should have. It feels like it was meant to be open world. Ghost of Tsushima earns its open world title. I did have a few issues with Ghost of Tsushima, such as the fact that it's super action based. So it made me start thinking, hey, maybe this should be more action oriented. But 
Ghost of Tsushima earned its open world title. Horizon Zero Dawn earned its open world title. There are many open world games like Far Cry and Fallout that have earned their open world title. Elden Ring feels like it should have just been a linear action game just like the previous Dark Souls games, and it didn't even upgrade its combat mechanics either. But when I explore the open world environment of Elden Ring just to quote, find shit as you say, the shit that I find is just a bunch of enemies and bosses to fight. When I explore in Ubisoft games, it's way more than that. When I explore in Bethesda games, it's way, way, way more than that. It's an immersive sim, so I can interact with the environment and actually benefit from exploration. But in Elden Ring, it's merely just action based. It's just to fight a new boss or to fight another enemy. Or maybe you found a new weapon to fight more bosses or a new build to fight more enemies. And that's really it. That's all I found all over its open world environment. And when I talk to people, they just say the same dialogue over and over and over, and they have no routine or AI, so they don't feel alive. And while I wouldn't say that not using the Ubisoft open world formula is inherently revolutionary, it does make Elden Ring stand out compared to most other open world games nowadays that do use the Ubisoft formula. What does Elden Ring have in its open world design? Oh, I'll tell you nothing! It doesn't have open world design. The game is a huge ass, mother flipping experience, but it didn't utilize its open world design. It just plops you in there and expects you to do the same things you do in all from software games. That includes Dark Souls 1. And that's it! That's the entire game! I've played it for months and months and months! Are you sure about that? Because looking at your footage, you're still in fucking Limgrave. I mean, maybe it's possible that it's just starting a new run with a new character, but I'm not gonna put my bets on that. So don't give me that I didn't assess it properly shit. See, the Ubisoft design is designed for people to have different activities in the open world department. When you remove this, you have to have your own design and activities in your open world for people to have fun. What does Spider-Man have? Delivering pizzas on the PS2 version or the PS4. You can stop criminals, side at, do side activities, fight bad guys, explore the city, web sling, awesome. It utilizes the fact that it's open world. It's not just, okay, action RPG now, open world RPG, and that's it. Yes, it's perfectly fine to have an open world game that focuses on giving a wide variety of activities to do, but it's also perfectly fine to have an open world game that focuses on the core gameplay, which is what Elden Ring does. You're saying that it's perfectly fine for an open world to have multiple activities, but it's also perfectly fine to have an open world that focuses mainly on the, mainly on the core gameplay. No, this open world game needs to have open world world aspects to its environment it has to have interactivity it has to have open world activity it has to feel like you're immersed in the open world experience it has to be more than just the combat and that's the thing that separates a lot of games that claim that they're open world and they're not i'll give you exam an example Infamous 2 is actually not an open world. Did you know that? Infamous 2 is actually a linear action game, but guess what? It fleshes out its open-ended environment so much it could easily be classified as an open world. Then you have Jack 2. Jack 2 is tremendously huge, very large, and has 3D platforming plus third-person shooting plus it's an open world, and at the same time, guess what? It's linear. Yes, the game is actually linear. It just has a large interconnected sandbox environment that's so big and interconnected that it's basically an open world even dark souls one the entire environment is so interconnected you could argue that's open world but guess what these all flesh out their environments especially jack 2 now i know dark souls is mainly action based but jack 2 fleshes out its environment there are different quest lines and activities all over its environment it's absolutely groundbreaking you come to elden ring it does have a lot of space but what does it do with that space more action more fighting no immersive sim elements like in skyrim none of that elden ring has an excellent gameplay loop and from software wanted to make the open world focus on that gameplay loop if that's not the kind of open world design you want to play in that's fine but that doesn't mean it's inherently bad now what about the open world part see skyrim didn't just do that skyrim is huge and it utilizes every aspect of its open world environment. Elden Ring only utilizes it for one purpose, fighting, and that's it. 
I mean, it also uses it for exploration and for NPC quest lines, but, you know, sure, I guess we're just gonna gloss over that, although, to be fair, fighting is the majority of what you do in a Souls game. But that doesn't mean that Elden Ring doesn't use the open world to its advantage. For example, fights against the Tree Sentinel or the Fire Giant are done because of the open world mechanics. There's also the freedom about which encounters to tackle and when, and if you're struggling on one, you can go do something else instead. Not to mention the loot hidden in the open world. Once again, you're fucking wrong. So I don't think that the fights against the Tree Sentinel are done because of the open world mechanics. Because I feel like that a lot of these fights could have easily been done in a linear game anyway. You didn't need an open world environment just to have those kinds of boss fights take place. You could have just had an open ended level inside of a linear game. You're saying Elden Ring is not the same game as Dark Souls 1? I strongly disagree. It has the exact same fundamental mechanics, the same combat system, and even if you use different builds, a lot of those builds you could use a lot of stuff just like that inside of Dark Souls 1. And don't get me started on Dark Souls 3. Dark Souls 3 is so close to Elden Ring it's not even funny. Dark Souls 3 and Elden Ring are dead close. Elden Ring is like if you took Dark Souls 3 and gave it an open world, but didn't do much with its open world design. Actually, the design of Elden Ring leaves much to be desired. You can't do any immersive elements or anything like that. You don't do the same open world aspects or activities that you do in other open worlds. It doesn't even feel like an open world game. Its open world environment is almost empty feeling. It leaves you feeling empty and that's so disappointing. And it drives me crazy because I love Dark Souls 1, but I hate Elden Ring with a burning passion because its open world environment feels like it's being utilized for no reason. You see, when you have an open world environment, it needs to serve a purpose, a deeper purpose than just being a linear action game. What leads you to wonder why the fuck is this even open world if you're gonna do the same thing you do in a linear environment? So you might as well have made this a linear game. The fact that people praise this game and put it up as the revolutionary groundbreaking experience, oh, you don't know what's around the corner of the open environment that's what makes it so mind-blowing except you fucking do behind each part of the environment is just another boss the end this is the entire environment aside from dungeons and hazards that's it that's literally it the entire open world is the big ass arena for fighting dude that's fucking boring why i'll tell you why because motherfucker i already played it I played the first fucking Dark Souls. I don't want to play that shit again. Well, luckily for you then, Elden Ring is not the same game as Dark Souls 1, even if they do have a lot of similarities, because, again, that's how fucking sequels work. Or I guess technically Elden Ring is a spiritual successor, because technically it's not part of the Dark Souls franchise, but y you know what I mean, it's obviously meant to be a Souls game. I want a new experience, not the same fucking shit! Have you lost your mind? God damn, these from software fanboys are so fucking unreasonable. You can't say one fucking thing without them losing their shit like I'm losing mine. Okay, while I will agree that FromSoft fanboys are absolute fucking cancer, that doesn't change the fact that the criticisms you're giving are completely fucking stupid or just flat out wrong. If you just left it as Elden Ring is just not the kind of game that you want to play, that would have been perfectly fine. But that fact does not make the design of Elden Ring inherently bad. Oh, because, oh, it's so groundbreaking. Groundbreaking my ass. You're doing the same shit as Dark Souls 1. Dark Souls 1 is groundbreaking! You having an empty open world environment that only serves one purpose, and you call that revolutionary? It's not revolutionary. It's not groundbreaking. You people blew this shit way, and I do mean way out of proportion! Rejection detected, opinion rejected. <laughs> And never knows best, in his Elden Ring video, he stated you can't even play blind. It's actually fucking true! No, it isn't. You can play Elden Ring blind just fine if you want. Like, have you noticed that some of the Sites of Grace have these sort of trails that point you in a certain direction? You know, a mechanic that the game teaches you right from the get-go? Actually, even Never Knows Best has stood out and spoken out about the fact that you can't really play Elden Ring blind the same way you play Dark Souls 1 blind. 
so that is blatantly untrue. If you're ever confused as to where you need to go, just follow the trails from the Sites of Grace and they'll lead you to where you need to go to progress the main story. Of course, if you want to, you can choose to completely ignore them and just fuck around wherever you want to in the open world. It's really up to you. Just to even play this, unlike Dark Souls 1, I can play that blind. I had to look up guides just to play Elden Ring. Yeah, that just sounds like a you problem because, again, the Sights of Grace will guide you where you need to go to progress the main path. Actually, it's not just a me problem because other people who commented on Never Knows Best video also had a hard time playing Elden Ring, so they looked up guides and even builds. So people are looking up how to build their character a specific kind of way just to beat certain bosses and also looking up certain guides just to even get through the game. I had to look up a guide just to get further into the game myself. Yes! This is the hardest farm software game by a fucking mile! Dude, it's hard as fuck in comparison to any of their games. I played most of their games. Aside from Dark Souls 2, I played Sekiro. I own Bloodborne. I played Dark Souls 1. I own Dark Souls 1. I played Dark Souls 3, and so on. I played farm software games. So don't give me that, oh, you don't know how these games work. You couldn't possibly understand. Motherfucker, I do understand. Motherfucker, I played it. Don't give me that shit. You can kiss this ass, because motherfucker, I played it. So hearing that shit is so annoying. I mean, I guess I can't really speak to your experience, whether you struggled more with this or not. But honestly, I thought Elden Ring was the easiest of all the Souls games I've played. Now, granted, I haven't played Dark Souls 3, Sekiro, or Bloodborne, but I find Elden Ring to be easier than the other FromSoft games. You're saying it's the easiest. Other people are saying it's the hardest by a landslide. Other people are saying, oh, the easiest was Dark Souls 3. Some people say the easiest is Dark Souls 2. You firm software fans always switch the goalposts when it comes to whether which one is the easiest or hardest. And it's kind of frustrating. Okay? When I was just pointing out the fact that the open world design has issues. And yes, I might have been angry, but it doesn't matter. What matters is the main point. So, here's the thing. It doesn't matter whether it's the easiest or the hardest. What matters is... It does Elden Ring even need to be open world? It could it have just worked as a linear action game? If the answer is no, it could have easily worked as a linear action game, then what is the purpose of its open world design? Okay, so yes, I prefer the combat systems of Devil May Cry and Kingdom Hearts over that of, well, from software games in general. However, I still love Dark Souls, so of course I'm going to play their newest game. And I'm curious as to see if I could play when people say there's going to be an open world Dark Souls game. Dude, that's exciting until I realized what kind of open world they were going to make. I went when the game was coming out, I saw exactly what they were going to do with Elden Ring. And I was so disappointed even before it came out. I was angry. I said, you could do so much. You could Skyrim that shit. You could literally fall out that shit. And you're just going to sit there and just do Dark Souls again? Except now it's more open-ended? That's such a waste of a great experience. Imagine Dark Souls, but you can do all the immersive sim things you do in Skyrim. I'd be in tears. It would be one of the greatest games of all time. It'd be a fucking masterpiece. That's how people are treating Elden Ring, but it didn't earn that because it doesn't do anything like that. Instead, this easily could have just been a linear action game. And the other FromSoft games, like Dark Souls 1 is harder, Dark Souls 2 is harder, Demon Souls is harder. And again, here's some advice. If you're struggling on something in Elden Ring and just can't seem to progress, try going somewhere else for a bit instead. Level up, get some gear, upgrade the gear that you currently have, and then come back and retry the boss. And something else you gotta keep in mind because Elden Ring is an open world game, there are some areas that are designed to be tackled later on because they have harder enemies and they expect you to have higher stats and better equipment. So if you're getting your ass handed to you by a specific area, try going somewhere else and you might find that another area might be more suited for where you're currently at. Well I prefer action games that have a more complex combat system. And let's dive into that for a sec. In other games like Devil May Cry, and yes Kingdom Hearts, and even Near Automata, they have complex combat systems with different attack moves and techniques. Because Firm Software has to maintain the groundedness of Dark Souls formula and meticulous movement. They have to limit their combat systems in all of their games. That includes Elden Ring. So you're stuck with the same meticulous movement and limited attacks and combat techniques. You can't utilize a different combat system. You can't utilize different attack moves and techniques that shit would be fucking absolutely cool but you can't do these things 
sharper for other combat systems because of this! I'm gonna be honest with you, Tarragon. If you just left it at this and said that you prefer the combat system in games like Devil May Cry and Nier Automata compared to the slower and more tactical combat system of Elden Ring and Dark Souls, I honestly wouldn't have taken an issue with that. My problem is with you getting things objectively wrong when it comes to the way Elden Ring works. Not to mention, if you've already played the other Souls games and said that you don't like the core combat design of those compared to other games like Devil May Cry or Nier Automata, then why the fuck are you playing a Souls game? So at this point, he goes on like a rant for like the next 45 seconds, just reiterating all the points I've already responded to, and then ends off the video, so I don't think we need to watch that, so... I guess the key takeaway here is that just because you might not prefer a certain style of game over another, it doesn't mean that it's inherently bad. Additionally, while the core of Elden Ring might be the same as Dark Souls, they've made a lot of changes around that to warrant it being its own game. Oh, and not every single game needs to follow the Ubisoft style of open world for it to be a good open world game. But that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more, and tell me what you think of this dude ranting about Elden Ring. Anyways, that's it. Peace! I'm not saying games need to follow Ubisoft's formula, but it really would be nice to see that formula since guys keep complaining about it, saying it's so bad, it's this and that, but honestly, it's an incredible formula, and I miss that formula, and games like Elden Ring make me miss it much, much more. And that goes for Bethesda's formula, too. And that's my response to Thunderstruck 115. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from, but I still stand by what I said. And this was Terragon, and thank you for watching.